guys! My name is Jesse Mew, and welcome to my new Hard Mode Island Challenge! This is going to be a little side project for us to have fun with alongside our other islands, so don't worry, the Tribe of the Tides is still a thing. But you guys inspired me to give this one a try, because a lot of you mentioned in the comments that you haven't actually seen the Hard Mode Island yet, so I thought to mix things up, to keep things interesting, what we would do is we would take our starting pair here, so Adam and Eve, and bring them all the way over to the Hard Mode Island to see if they can survive. So we're not going to give them any time in between to pick their berries. They're not going to even um, have children before they get there. They're just going to dive straight into the grass, go all the way through all of this tall grass, and sit down on these ports with these little skeletons as company and see if they can start a family on the hard mode island instead. So this is going to be a little bit different from the other series that I usually make on this game, simply because I'm not going to be mapping out the um, family tree as intensely, I guess, as I normally do. This is all going to be about survival, so we're going to look pretty exclusively at the genetics that they're carrying, rather than where they fall on the family tree. So to start things off, we need to figure out what the shortest route possible is to get to the hard mode island, because every single day that we pass here, they are going to lose two pieces of food. So I think if we actually merge with this little clearing up here, we might be able to get there a little bit faster. I wondered if maybe we should go along the shore, but it seems like, honestly, it might just be easier to cut straight through the grass. Unless we have all these berry bushes here. Okay. Okay, that's unexpected. Oh my gosh. What a waste. What a waste of an island that we're leaving behind here. This would have been excellent if we were actually starting just a normal island. All of these berry bushes, all of these nests for us to use. This is a little bit sad, actually. So we're probably only going to be skipping one day, it looks like. I think they can probably get to these ports on the next day. So let's go ahead and skip the day and hope that nothing, like, jumps out at us now. Because that would be pretty terrible. Um, I think we're okay, though. We'll go over here and then sit right on the ports, it looks like. There we go. So we don't know what sort of world we're going to end up in here. It would be excellent if it was just like this one and we ended up with a ton of berry bushes, but if we end up in a place like um, the desert instead, then we might have a little bit of trouble. It's already going to be hard enough with all of the carnivores spawning, with all of the birds in the sky, and of course with the leeches and the crabbits and all sorts of nasty predators, but our first priority is probably going to be just trying to find food. So let's go ahead and have Eve um, click on this port right here, and we'll see what sort of island we end up on. <laughs> okay, here we are, and we landed right in the middle of a flower patch. Oh my gosh, and we have all these crabbits here to greet us. But there we go, we are actually spawning at the edge of a desert again, it looks like. The only berry bush I can see, technically berry bush I can see, is um, a cactus right here. So that's not exactly the best start. Um, we have a little tree over here with another nest, another nest way back there. But I guess to start things off, we are just going to have to jump straight toward this nest in the desert. So let's kind of like weave our way around these crabbits, I guess. We'll go this way and hope again that nothing jumps out at us because the carnivore do spawn a lot faster on the hard mode island as I'm sure you guys can hear from all of that noise in the background oh my goodness okay so we want um, Adam and Eve to breed as soon as possible as well it would be great if we could find a berry bush before they have their babies so that we don't lose too much food but I think it might also be a good idea for us to put the cracker jaw in here as soon as possible we of course don't have access to the nimble fingers just yet so we can't use those instead but this will at least give us the ability to um, use the shells that we find as well as the acorn if we um, end up underneath the tree. So we'll put the cracker jaw on there and hope that it mutates onto one of our babies. And the other thing I probably want to put in here is the um, normal eyesight because Adam does carry the short-sighted gene. So I'm a little bit worried that if we don't put that in there, we might end up with a lot of short-sighted creatures. So why don't we try to find some source of food that we can actually use without um, harming our creatures? And it looks like we're actually missing a berry. We're actually missing a berry there. Like, is something picking the berries? Would that be a bunny or would that be a creature? Um, I don't see anything yet, so I'm not exactly sure what it could be, but we'll just keep our eye on that because something definitely stole one of our berries. Let's have Adam go in here. Um, keep your eyes out for some berry bushes. We'll just have them kind of like play leapfrog until they can find something. Um, it is very bare over here though. That is not good. Um, maybe we should actually have them breed because I'm worried now that we're going to uh, run into some carnivores out here without having any babies at all. So they only have 15 days left of their lifespans too. We don't want them to get too old. Let's go ahead and actually have um, Eve breed with Adam and then she can stay behind for a little while. And if we absolutely have to, then we will have her pick from the cactus just so that we can get a little bit of extra food. But Adam, you are going to have to carve your own path. There we go. 
there's a berry bush right next to where you guys stopped. So at least we know that we have some source of food over here. We'll have Adam clear a little path so that we can um, actually get to this berry bush. And on the next turn, we'll have um, Eve have her baby. And then Adam can actually pick a little bit of food for us to use. We are down to 12 pieces of food, so we do need to be careful about this. And there's something rustling right there. Great. Let's um, make sure that it doesn't steal our berries. We'll move Eve right here. Um, whatever it is, it did not steal the berries yet, so we'll go ahead and grab a couple of these. There we go. And then, um, yeah, we'll leave Eve right there. We'll allow her to um, save her lifespan by not picking from this cactus just yet. And um, we'll see what little baby we get out of this pair, I guess. Let's see. Oh my gosh, she almost looks exactly like her mother. That is so adorable. And luckily, she did not inherit the Anopaw. I was a little bit worried that we were going to end up with um, another Anopaw situation, but thankfully we have one without the Anopaw at all. And not to mention, her genetics are pretty much perfect. She has two normal eyes, she has two normal blood clotting genes, so she is a very, very good luck baby, especially considering um, the island that we're on. So let's have Adam actually explore a little bit more. We'll have him peek in um, some of this tall grass right here and then we're going to want them to have another baby very soon. But we actually need to keep Eve um, right next to the baby that we currently have because now we're going to have to worry about that bird in our skies again. It doesn't seem like the bird is out here yet. Um, I don't see the bird in our skies just yet, but if we do leave the baby, then I feel like it's very likely that he will probably come rushing out to grab this little one from our nests. So instead, we'll skip the turn and then we'll start having Adam and Eve meet in the middle, I suppose. It would be excellent if we could find a nest up here by um, this berry bush in particular, because it's not really helpful for us to have a, a cactus right next to the nest. So we could probably move the baby and her mother together. If we move um, the baby right here, then we can move her mother right here, and then Adam could actually meet Eve right in the middle, and they can have um, another baby together. And then Adam can go back up this way to um, sit next to the berry bush again. So we are getting a little bit lower on food, which is a little bit worrying. Um, we probably want Eve to settle herself up here since she can pick the berries a little bit faster. Or for that matter, when um, this little baby grows up, she can sit next to the berry bush instead. And then we can focus on pushing out the territory and finding more nests and um, berry bushes with Adam. So let's skip the turn yet again. I'm kind of surprised that we haven't run into a carnivore yet or um, for that matter, any of those wandering creatures, because we do actually have to worry about the wandering males now. So let's actually have Eve move um, into the desert up this way, because it does seem like it's a little bit easier for us to find nests in the desert. So if she moves this way, she might get lucky and um, stumble into another nest, while these guys continue picking all of the berries off of this bush, this one little measly bush that we've managed to find. And again, for that matter, if we can hopefully mutate that cracker jaw, then maybe we can settle underneath um, this tree right here. It looks like it's kind of clear of swampland. We have a little bit of swampland around it, but it's not directly underneath the tree. So if we could settle down some cracker jaw creatures underneath um, this big tree, then they would probably be very, very helpful to the pack. But let's go ahead and skip the day again. Again, we're down to um, just six pieces of food and there is the bird. I knew you were gonna come out eventually. So luckily this little baby is just big enough that she won't actually get taken away by the bird. But let's have Adam jump in here and see what this is. Aha. That was one of those wandering males. Okay, so we definitely have him on our trail at the moment. And um, we'll go ahead and have Koana at least pick the berries for us since she can pick two at a time. She should be able to um, pick that up much faster than her father could. And then we'll have these guys start playing leapfrog this way, I suppose. Um, no new nest just yet, which is a little bit worrying. They do still have um, quite a bit left of their lifespan, so I'm not too worried about them uh, passing away before they can have another baby, but we don't want them to wait too long to start their family. So we'll have Eve kind of scoot off of this way a little bit to um, find another nest, and if not, then she can just make her way right back down to the nest that she used before. Let's skip the turn again. Um, no new carnivores yet. Again, I am very, very surprised because the carnivores do spawn very quickly. Oh my gosh, he has the nimble fingers too. Oh my gosh, this is somebody that we could invite, but unfortunately I used both of her turns on um, this berry bush. I wonder if he was stealing our berries. I wonder if we could have Adam come down here, then um, maybe he could invite him if um, we can get close enough, but it looks like he's very, very shy. So we're just going to have to keep our eye on that. Maybe he'll come out again to say hi to Koana in a moment. Oh, look at that. Not only do we have this little creature wandering around with us, but we also have a little bunny burrow back here. Excellent. That could also be what was stealing some of our berries. And this guy, let's take a quick look at this guy so that we know what his genetics are like. Okay, the short-sighted eyes, which I don't like to see. Of course, the two no paws. He has the spit snout and he also has hemophilia. Oh my gosh. And not only that, but I don't think his immunity 
genes are particularly good. Um, yeah, actually, they are exactly the same as Adam, so that would be absolutely terrible if this one um, took advantage of Eve. We're going to have to make sure that he does not do that because we would end up with a pretty rotten baby if we did so. So let's skip the turn and hope that this little one doesn't move because we do want him to um, come into our pack as soon as possible. Let's actually invite him right away with little Koana. There we go. And let's look at his genes too. Oh my goodness, thankfully he has um, a completely new gene. He has immunity gene I. So that is very, very good to see because he could actually breed with um, maybe Koana for that matter. He does have, of course, a short-sighted eyes in his genetics, but he also has the um, nimble fingers and we really do need to get those nimble fingers in here as soon as possible so that we can start collecting um, shells and acorns and whatnot. So what are we going to do with this guy? Like, I guess Eve could actually swat him away a little bit just to shorten his life because we know that these guys are very, very persistent. So he is definitely not going to leave her alone until he's gone. Um, I guess for now we can have her just sit over here and there we go. There is a berry bush. I mean, it's a little shriveled up berry bush, but at least it's something. If you could pick up these before um, anyone else comes by and actually takes them from you, then that would be a good idea. And then um, we'll have you guys continue picking your berries and um, hopefully you guys can actually find a nest off this way. If we have Adam kind of clear out the area a little bit, then we can have you start peeking in this grass over here. Um, nothing just yet, but we'll keep our eyes open for more nests. There has to be more around here somewhere. Like, maybe they're just way off in the distance, but we have so many resources over here that I would hate to actually abandon them. Let's go ahead and skip the turn again, though. Still no carnivores? But do we have two birds? Oh my goodness, we actually have two birds in our skies? That is not exactly the best thing. Um, I don't see that male over here anymore, so what we might do is have um, Eve pick the berries really quickly and then sit in this nest because she is getting quite old now. Seven days left of her life. And then um, we actually want these guys to start breeding too. So can we place the nimble fingers in here just yet? Um, no, it does not actually look like we can. So we need um, just a few more berries before we can use the nimble fingers and then um, we could place that in there instead. But honestly, I mean, we don't have to worry about the no paw for their baby at least. So we may as well just breed them right now and then um, we'll sit them on the nest as soon as we possibly can. Luckily, Duke to Duke is um, actually quite young. So we don't have to worry about him passing away too soon either. But it might be a good idea for us to at least put like the ram horns in here for their baby in particular, just in case. Because if they can manage to inherit the nimble fingers, then we won't even have to worry about the cracker jaw. But um, the ram horns will at least give them a boost in strength. And like I said, I am very, very concerned that we are not finding any carnivores yet. Because typically when I play the hard mode islands, the carnivores come out in droves. So let's have them actually breed. We'll have her breed with him to use um, her energy up. And then he can start moving off um, this way, I suppose. I mean, we did quite a bit of exploring up here and we didn't find any nests. So let's actually try um, closer to the tree because sometimes we do find nests off by the um, trees anyway. So we'll have these guys just play a little bit of leapfrog until they can find something. Um, and unfortunately, it does not look like that's the case. Now, I think if we leave Koana right here, then we have a chance of having a little bunny spawn too. As long as they're um, far enough away, then the bunny can actually spawn from those burrows. So we'll leave her right there. And um, I guess we'll go ahead and skip the turn and see what this little baby's going to look like. It might actually be the last baby of Adam and Eve too because of um, how this has played out. And we are getting very, very low on our food as well. So what we might also want to do after we take a look at this baby who has some pretty good genetics, all things considered. He does have a no paw, but he also has two normal eyes. So that's good to see. But yeah, um, I think we probably want to take a look at the uh, ranking feature now because we're getting very, very low on food. So it would be a good idea if we could um, change around the ranks of our creatures. Basically, we have three ranks to choose from, alpha, beta, and omega. The alphas will eat first, the betas will eat second, and the omegas will eat last. And I just noticed that we have a new visitor back here. Hello, carnivore. <laughs> you heard me talking about you, I guess. I mean, it looks like it's actually a female carnivore. Is that true? It has um, a little pink spot over here. So is this a female carnivore just looming behind us right now? That's quite interesting. So we really don't want um, Duke to Duke to get hurt over here because he of course has our nimble fingers. Um, he only has one in strength too. Adam has a four in strength and he can actually poison the carnivore as well. So if you scoot over here, oh, find a berry bush, excellent. Um, poison our carnivore and then I think he's actually going to have to run. Otherwise he is definitely going to get shattered. Um, at the very least we can have Duke to Duke pick up this acorn right here. Um, are there any others for him to pick up? It doesn't look like in the immediate area anyway. So instead he can kind of like scoot off this way. 
um, and maybe scoot off even this way so that he's like behind the tree hiding from the carnivore. Maybe that would be a good idea. And um, Adam, I guess we'll have you scoot off in this direction and hope that you're just far enough away that the uh, carnivore will not pursue you. Though honestly, I have a feeling that he is going to do just that, or she rather, she is going to do just that. So why don't we actually have Koana move over this way to peek in a little bit more of this grass just to keep us a little bit more safe. And we'll have Eve um, move out of the nest but stay right next to her baby because we have that bird in our skies. It looks like um, one of them actually left. Yeah, we only have one bird in our skies now, so the other one got bored and um, ended up leaving. That's good. We definitely don't need two birds in our skies. Um, so we have 11 pieces of food, and we want to make sure that our most important creatures right now are um, made alphas, which would probably be, of course, Duke to Duke. We're going to make him an alpha so that he can eat first, and um, probably Koana as well. She is quite important to us at the moment. I think I might also make um, Adam an alpha too, because he does have the poison fangs right now, and he does have the ram horns too. He is literally the strongest member of the pack right now, so we don't really want him passing away too early. Even her baby, I'm going to um, keep as betas. So if we do run out of food, they would be the first to um, actually take some starving damage over the other three right here. But I guess that's all we can do for this turn because we need her to stay next to her baby. So we'll go ahead and skip the turn again. And there he is. Oh, of course you would pick Duke to Duke. Of course you would pick him to attack. Um, let's have Adam slap this guy as much as we can. Oh gosh. Oh geez, we have another male right there. We have something over here too. Let's actually have Koana pick her berries and then move over here. Okay, okay, it's a Dodomingo. This might actually be a good sign for us though, because if the Dodomingo is in the grass, that might mean that there's a nest around here somewhere that we just haven't found yet. Um, they do prefer to stick by those nests. So why don't we actually move um, Kutata right over here so that we can start moving um, Eve a little bit further into the grass as well. Um, this guy's probably going to steal this nest though, isn't he? I noticed that the bird was going straight toward this nest, so that may have not been the best idea. But we do want to find more nests because just having one nest is not going to cut it at this point. Yeah, this bird is going straight for the nest. Well, I guess that's okay. I mean, we can hopefully move him out of the nest if we need to. We'll have Adam um, go back to attacking this one though, and there we go. Actually, he took it out in one swing, and now that means that we can um, actually harvest up all of this meat and all of the acorns too, so not bad at all. Now we're going to have plenty of food to last us through a couple more days, and hopefully to support a little bit of a higher population too. So in fact, maybe we should start having Koana move um, toward this nest again. She only has one turn anyway, so she can't make it straight over to the nest, but we'll move her right here, and then we'll have to wait for this bird to uh, move off of the nest for us. So let's have Adam peek in this grass, and then we'll skip the day and um no more carnivores right no more carnivores sneaking out of the grass on us i think we're okay we did unlock a gene though oh excellent the nimble fingers yes that's exactly what i wanted to see okay so i'm not exactly sure if it's going to matter if we place it in here now because of course koana already bred with her mate so it might not make a difference but when they have another baby we'll make sure that we place it in the mutation menu instead for now, you might as well clear out um, a little bit of this grass over here and we'll just keep our eye on this bird, though it does not seem to be moving. It has firmly planted itself right on that nest, so I definitely should not have done that. Um, that's okay though, eventually it'll move, right? Or we can just slap it, I guess. If worse comes to worse, we can just slap the guy. It might actually bring out more um, predators and different birds too. There we go, there we go, it managed to move. It heard me, it knew that I was going to uh, slap it if it didn't move. So there we go, now um, Koana can officially have her first baby and hopefully it'll have those nimble fingers and maybe even the ram horns too. And um, Eve, you can scoot off this way for now and just um, take a peek in a little bit of this grass over here with your baby. And let's see, she only has four more days, so she could technically have one more baby with Adam if we move them fast enough. And I think we might do that because we do have enough food at the moment. So let's go ahead and skip this turn and see what this baby's going to look like. Oh my gosh, really out of that little tiny patch of grass? Oh my goodness, that is not good. But look at this baby. Oh, he is beautiful. He is absolutely adorable and he has those perfect genetics too. Um, an A and a B in the immunity genes and we are going to have to um, keep a very close eye on that very soon. But what are we going to do with this carnivore now? That is the question. We definitely want Eve to uh, breed with Adam. So actually, if we stick her like right here, 
Then um, Adam could actually meet up with her, she could breed with him, and then he can dive in here and start whittling away at this carnivore. I mean, I guess we are actually going to have to have him just like sit next to the carnivore for now. I don't want the carnivore to destroy our other baby either, so this is um, a little bit concerning. We'll have him at least poison the carnivore. Um, this is a male carnivore too, it has the uh, little blue corner to its name, so that's quite interesting. I didn't realize that the uh, carnivores had genders, but I guess um, Kutata, you could actually slap the carnivore once and then like run away, run very, very far away. Um, we're going to have to have, of course, Koana stay right next to her baby. And I think we'll probably move her right here just so that she's in the area. I did notice, of course, this bird is still circling overhead. So we have to make um, very sure that we don't accidentally leave the babies alone. But um, Eve, I don't want you getting hit, especially because you're pregnant. So let's move you right over this way. We're going to keep um, Duke to Duke out of the way because he's already injured and we need to save those nimble fingers. So unfortunately, this might be the end of Adam. This might be the complete end of Adam. I mean, there's no way that the carnivore is going to die overnight. So let's see if that's the case. Oh my gosh, no, no, this is not good. <laughs> that is not what I expected. Oh my gosh, this little piece of grass is like the carnivore's haven right now. Oh, this is so bad. Okay, okay, how on earth are we going to protect everyone from this? This is not good. Um, the most that I could possibly do with you is slap him once and then run. And then Koana, you are actually going to have to take matters into your own hands, but I don't think you're strong enough. She only has a one in strength. So there's no way that she's going to be able to defend her babies from this guy. Oh my gosh, and then we have this one looming over here. And again, like the most we can really do is at least have Adam poison this guy. Um, let's see, how much more does he have left? 11 days on his life. I mean, maybe Adam could instead come over to this one and get rid of it for um, us because at this point he is going to completely obliterate these little babies. So what we might do is have Adam jump in here, slap this guy. Oh gosh. Oh, that is so close. Only two days left. So actually, you could come over here and finish him off for us. There we go. Okay, so that's one carnivore down. But now we have one in this darkness over here. And unfortunately, Eve is not going to be able to have her baby if she doesn't get to um, the nest in the very next turn. So we could have Duke to Duke move down here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, this guy is going to destroy Duke to Duke, isn't he? And then if we have Eve move this way... Um, oh gosh, and now we have the bird right here too. We have to be very, very careful about this. Let's see if I can do this correctly. If we move the little baby up here, and then Eve can go right in the nest. All right, so she can have her very last baby before um, the episode is over. Thankfully, thankfully we can have one more baby. And then we have uh, these little shells down here. We'll have Duke to Duke pick up this one and then move like way over here to try to get away from the carnivore. I don't want him to get destroyed because he has our nimble fingers, but I'm not sure if we can save him at this point. So let's pass the day again. Let's see what happens. Oh no, no, he destroyed Adam. He finally destroyed Adam. Oh, that is so sad. And we have um, another no paw baby, unfortunately. So it wasn't um, as lucky as her sister. So I'm not sure if she's going to be one of the ones that we end up breeding, but we definitely need to take care of this carnivore now. So she has um, eight days left on her life. And it looks like we also unlocked the claw, aha. So that's good. Maybe next time when we're um, picking out our next pairings, we can actually place the claw in there and try to get some uh, more strength on our pack mates. But who can actually attack him now? Because as it is, everyone is quite weak. I guess we could have Eve use her last bit of strength because this is her final day anyway. She'll jump in here and um, slap this carnivore as much as she possibly can, but honestly, it's not going to be very much. Yeah, this is definitely not looking good for our little group over here. If the carnivore decides to um, attack any of our babies, then they're probably going to get completely shattered. At the very least, though, we can pick up the food over here. Um, I kind of want to move this little baby away, though. So maybe we should actually move the baby next to um, his mother this way. And it looks like somebody's picking our berries over here, too. Something is in here, and they're picking up our berries. So we're going to have to investigate that, too, if we survive this. If we manage to survive. Um, I guess we could have Kutata maybe defend his family. I mean, I hate to sacrifice him, but if we have to choose between him and um, the baby with no no paw then I think this is going to be the case. So you jump in here, you slap this guy, and what on earth are you? 
Hello? Do we have a little savior? I mean, not exactly, because you don't have any strength on you at all. Oh my gosh, and look at your genetics. You have the blind eyes, you have two Bs, you have hemophilia too, and the lean body. So you are not exactly what we need right now, but I am keeping my eye on you because you were stealing our berries before. Um, I guess we can have Duke to Duke at least pick up this shell right here, and then we're going to have to have him maybe scoot a little bit closer. I mean, we'll settle him by the berry bush for now because he will be able to at least pick up the food. And <laughs> this guy, like, he really wants to be part of the pack. Um, I don't know. I mean, you're just going to kind of use up our food at the moment. Let's see. Can we make any um, good pairings with him? This baby already has immunity gene B, so that wouldn't be a good idea. And um, Eve, of course, is going to pass away. Koana could have a baby with this one. Um, that is a possibility. And he has the big ears. He actually has the big ears? Oh my gosh, that's what the big ears look like on the spit snout? Okay, I thought they were the um, normal sized ears because of course this one is so tiny. That's kind of adorable. Okay, so since we're having a situation where a bunch of our creatures are probably going to end up dying off anyway, we will officially greet this guy, take him into the pack. We know that Eve is passing away on our next turn. I'm a little bit worried about Kutata. Um, so we'll just cross our fingers that this is all okay. And actually, since he has a couple more turns, he could come um, around this way and do a little bit of exploring for us. So let's go ahead and skip the turn. Let's see what sort of damage this carnivore does to our family. Oh my goodness. Oh, that is terrible. Kutata, you lost so much of your life there. And of course, your mother just completely passed away. Um, so this one only has two days left on his lifespan. So thankfully, we can actually take him out now. There we go. And that little bird came out to um, actually investigate the situation too. But that's some extra food for us. So now we have um, more food in our stores at least. And now we definitely need to get back to breeding Duke to Duke and Koana again. So we wanted to place the um, nimble fingers in their mutation menu instead. We'll place that right in the 30% uh, slot and then our are there any other genetics that we really need to worry about for them? Um, I mean, of course, Kawana has those perfect genetics already. Duke to Duke does have short-sighted eyes, but let's go ahead and try to actually get those uh, ram horns on them again. Let's try to mutate the ram horns back into their family because right now, judging by all of these carnivores spawning in the grass, like that is very, very important. And hello, we have a little skeleton over here and we have a skeleton over here too. Oh my gosh, like all of these random creatures spawning off in the distance that I didn't even know about. There's no way that we could have actually found them either because they were so far away. Oh, that's a little bit sad. I hope they weren't like really, really important for um, our family. Though honestly, they could have been the wandering males too, so maybe it's not too bad. But yeah, we definitely need to um, swap these guys around a little bit. So let's move the little baby over here so that um, at least the baby's well protected. Let's actually have this little baby sit on the nest for us just to keep it warm because this bird is definitely it up again and then we'll have Koana move right here we'll have um, Duke to Duke pick a couple of his berries um, maybe one more and then sit over here so that she can breed with him and then um, she can move over to the nest can she actually move there in one turn Let's see. Yeah, she can. Whoa, she has such a high speed. Okay, it must be those two running legs that are really helping her out. Let's have our little spotty cheetah over here pick up some of these berries. And um, I guess he can actually move away a little bit because um, the babies are protected right now. So let's have him scoot off into the grass this way to try to find um, some more resources for us. We'll have him do a little bit of exploring since um, he's not exactly going to be one of our breeding pairs right now. And then we'll skip the turn and see if we can get some more nimble fingers on our babies. Yes, perfect. Okay, and I almost forgot that this poor guy was wounded. Oh my goodness, I completely forgot about that. Let's actually have the baby lick his wounds so that he doesn't um, completely bleed out anymore. And let's see what the genetics are like on this little baby. So we have the nimble fingers, we have the normal eyes. Unfortunately, we don't have the ram horns, though she did actually inherit the um, antlers, or she's carrying the antlers, rather. So maybe we actually want to uh, swap that around. We'll place the antlers in there instead, if um, that's going to be a little bit more dominant on our pack than the uh, ram horns. Okay, so Duke to Duke actually has the antlers in his genetics so that's why that was there so that's good to see maybe we can actually pull that out instead yeah, and even um, this guy right here has the antlers hidden in his genetics, so we are definitely going to keep a good eye on that. But things are already very, very chaotic here, as you guys have seen. We have so many carnivores spawning off in the distance. We have so many creatures out here, too, if those skeletons are any indication. Um, let's just have these guys pick a couple of these berries before we end off the episode so that we have a little bit more food. And we do want to um, make sure that, like, Rasira is made an alpha because we absolutely need to uh, keep her healthy and safe in the pack. We want to make sure that she's eating so that she can pass her nimble fingers on to um, some of her babies in the future. 
And for that matter, he is also a very good one to make an alpha too, because he has those perfect genetics, and he does have the two running legs as well. But I think in the next episode, we are definitely going to have to make sure that we're focusing on the strength of our pack mates, because clearly, Clearly, we're going to need a much higher strength if we're going to survive on the hard mode island. But I hope you guys are enjoying this challenge so far. I thought it would be something a little bit different, a little bit more chaotic than what we're used to for sure. And I'm really looking forward to seeing where else our little family is going to go. So thank you all so much for watching today, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys!